video if you're new to this channel make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe so today i'm going to be reacting to we believe adam lived do we believe adam lived six thousand years ago a uh, big shout out to the person that suggested this so without wasting time let's get into the video our next question uh sister i don't know how to pronounce the name irnis from Bosnia, mashallah, tabarakallah. Uh, she emails and uh, she says that she has read an article uh, in some uh, a magazine that uh, a painting has been discovered by humans in a cave that goes back 45,000 years. Then she says, but does this not clash with our belief that Adam alayhi uh, salam was around 6,000 years uh, ago from our time? وما أرسلنا من قبلك إلا رجالا نوحي إليهم فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون. So this is a question that deals with chronology. It deals with time frames. And she is asking a question that there seems to be a conflict between uh, the, the uh, archeological evidence for the existence of mankind and the notion that we have been on this earth for 6,000 years. So with regards to the archeological evidence, uh, it does appear to be pretty conclusive. There are multiple genres of evidences, not just one evidence. There are multiple, you know, um, uh, areas, if you like, of study that demonstrate that our species of mankind, of human beings, our particular species, we're not talking about Cro-Magnon or Neanderthal or Homo erectus or Homo habilis. We're talking about actual us as Homo sapiens, our species. Uh, it has been around for at least 50, 60,000 years. At the very least, this is like, now this is pretty much definitive in terms of, again, so much, uh, so many evidences. You have only brought one evidence, which is uh, paintings in a cave. And uh, there are paintings in multiple areas, uh, a famous cave in France uh, that was covered up uh, and basically left untouched for 25,000 years. Uh, that uh, um, it was discovered only a few years ago uh, because of a certain uh, crevice that opened up and you find paintings that can be easily carbon-14 dated and handprints and you can put your hand and there are modern archaeologists that have put their hand next to the original and it is exactly the same this is human beings and you see art I mean you know no other species is drawing art other than us you know so you see art of an animal you see recognizable animals that we recognize that would have been around uh, you know um, 45,000 years ago as well the Aborigines um, uh, in Australia, there is evidence that they have been there for around 40,000 years. There's archaeological evidence, bones and whatnot. So, and, and, and the Aborigines are of the most ancient of all races that have been cut off from the mainstream of humanity. And so quite a lot of research has been done on them, their genetic structures and whatnot. And uh, other things also point to uh, mankind having been on this earth for, as I said, at least 50, 40 to 50,000, if not more. Some have posited uh, even a few more um, uh, uh, millennia than this. But the point being, yes, it is pretty definitive. Now, the next thing you mentioned is that Adam alayhi salam existed 6,000 years ago. And this is where we say, where did you get this number from? Because we firmly believe that there cannot be a actual clash between definitive science and between explicit and authentic scripture. There cannot be an actual clash between something that is certain and something that is clear cut from observable science and phenomenon and uh, uh, something that is in the Quran or authentic sunnah that is uh, clear in meaning. Why? Because the Quran is from Allah and our creation is also, Allah is our creator. And so to Allah belongs the creation and the command. So the creation is the world around us and the command is the Quran and the speech of Allah. So when the both of them come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the one of them is created and the other is uncreated, then how can there be a conflict between the two? We believe firmly there can never be a definitive conflict. 
If there is, it is a perceived one in our minds, and we need to work out how to reconcile. And in this particular case, uh, we say that this 6,000 time frame that you are coming from, in reality, it is not based on any Islamic sources. It is coming from Judeo-Christian sources. We as Muslims do not believe necessarily that Adam alayhi salam existed uh, 6,000 years ago. Rather, this is something that some segments of Judaism and in particular Orthodox Judaism, and of course they have a calendar by the way, like we have the Hijri calendar and the Christians have their Gregorian uh, calendar uh, and uh, other civilizations have their calendars. Uh, the Jewish people have their calendar and in their calendar, uh, they date the beginning of their calendar from the time of Adam alayhi salam. That is their mythology. And according to them, uh, our year is 2021 in the Gregorian uh, and uh, meaning, the, not ours, meaning ours, the Western civilization and theirs, uh, the Jewish civilization, their year is 5,781. So we are currently in the year 50. 781. So according to the Jewish calendar, Adam existed 5,781 years ago. However, that is something that is found in their sources. We do not have to have this particular uh, time frame. And in fact, we are not bound by any dates. And therefore, as Muslims, we say that we do not have a theological chronology. We don't have a calendar or a time frame that we are bound to believe in. And so people are free to believe whatever they want from a Islamic perspective. So if somebody, for whatever reason, wants to believe 6,000, that's their prerogative. We don't, not, nobody's saying that as a Muslim, Islam tells us to do that. And if somebody says, well, science tells us that we've been for 50,000 years, so we're gonna have to extrapolate Adam to be back uh, 50,000 years or whatever, that too is permissible. The Sharia does not, uh, does not have any numbers when it comes to dates. So Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah that there is no actual conflict between uh, the chronology of science in this regard and the chronology of theology because we do not have this. In fact, in my other lectures, I have actually um, uh, mentioned that uh, we actually might have some evidence to indicate that the 6,000 does not make any sense. And of them is the, uh, it is a hadith, even though it is very weak, some have said uh, batil, uh, that uh, it is alleged that our Prophet said, uh, most likely this might be Ibn Abbas, but it is alleged that our Prophet uh, would stop uh, his nasab or his lineage when he gets to Adnan. And Adnan is 20 generations before the Prophet and then he would not go beyond this. And there is a report that he would say, nasabun, that the scholars of lineage are lying or mistaken. They do not know uh, who is before Adnan because Allah says in the Quran, وَقُرُونًا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ كَثِيرًا This is Surah Furqan, verse 38. This is a key verse. Now, the hadith, might be from Ibn Abbas. Uh, it's not from the Prophet system. It's actually, it's ascribed to him in the books, but in reality, it has people in the chain that uh, make us say that it's not authentic. In fact, it might be batil or maybe even uh, mawdur. Uh, but it, it might be from uh, a tabi'i or, or maybe even Ibn Abbas. And the concept of we don't know who is beyond Adnan, this is an authentic concept. By the way, who is Adnan? Adnan is the father of one of the main two branches of the Arabs. The Arabs were two main branches. We can very simplistically say Middle uh, Arabia and South Arabia. And you had Adnan and Qahtan to be these two major uh, players that were r roughly the same uh, time frame. And it is considered, uh, the Arabs would consider that the descendants of both Adnan and Qahtan, these are what make all of the Arab tribes. So all of the Arab tribes were divided into Adnani or Qahtani. And our Prophet was an Adnani. Uh, and Adnan was of the descendants of Ismail. And Ismail was of the descendants of Nuh. And Nuh was of the descendants of uh, Adam alayhi salam. However, the, 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 the names of the individuals between Adam and Nuh and between Nuh and Ibrahim and between Ibrahim and Adnan, this is something that we do not know. Now you will find charts in many Muslim households, in many Sira books, you will find charts that have names, but we do not know. We do know for certain pretty much, the history is pretty clear, uh, up to Adnan, uh, because uh, the, the, the Arabs documented their tribes. The Arabs documented uh, the founders, and so you know who is Quraysh, you know, um, uh, and uh, the the descendants of Quraysh and the uh, ancestors of Quraysh all the way to Adnan. However, between Adnan and Ismail, we do not know how many. 
and Ismail is the son of Ibrahim. Between Ibrahim and Nuh, some reports mention 10, but in reality, these do not go back to the Prophet ﷺ, and we do not have to believe in them. And also between Nuh and Adam, some reports again mention 10, but these are not a hadith. And this is like, you know, people of the past, maybe even a companion speaking. And so this is not something that we have to necessarily believe in. And we do not know, therefore, how many generations existed. And, and in fact, it doesn't make sense for Allah to use, this, uh, use the term kathira. Allah is saying lots of generations between them. And this is in the Quran, Surah Furqan, uh, verse 38, بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ كَثِيرًا And if you look at these charts, you find that there's only 10 or, or uh, you know, uh, people between uh, Ibrahim and, and, uh, and um, uh, Nuh and Nuh and, and Adam. Just 10 is not kathir. Kathira, 10 is not that much that Allah is saying there were many generations between them. For Allah to say many, it does not make sense that there's only uh, 10. And in fact, we have other you know, evidences that might indicate this of them, is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 124,000 prophets, 124,000 prophets. We know this from the ahadith. Now, the names of these prophets and their stories, and even from common knowledge of history, we don't know from our Quran and Sunnah, we know around 25. And we can add another 20 or so names that we're not certain about from the Old Testament because the Old Testament mentions, you know, some of the prophets that were between uh, uh, Sulaiman, uh, between Musa and between Isa. Uh, the Old Testament mentions all of the names of the prophets. So we can say, okay, this is what they know and it's not something we need to accept or to reject. But still, the grand total that we would be able to get is less than, let's say, 50 names, okay? And that's from including sources that are dubious because the 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 the, the um, Judeo-Christian sources, we don't have to believe in them, but we can narrate them. So 120,000 prophets, and we do not even have knowledge of the majority of them. The only way to explain this would be to extrapolate the beginning of mankind to many, many, many thousands of years ago, and then to posit that there were prophets that came in antiquity, there was no rec record, there was no writing, because again, reading and writing is something that very, very recently has been uh, invented. Allah bless mankind with that. Otherwise, uh, for most of human history, uh, writing did not exist. Uh, and even paintings were rare, but they were there. They could draw, but they, the concept of writing and, and speech being written down and recorded in alphabets or hierographics, this is something that is relatively very, very, very recent in human uh, history. Only goes back, uh, uh, you know, we actually have records uh, maybe 2,000, 3,000, the very most to have some things here. So in reality, uh, we don't have, and of course that even those, by the way, hylographics is not the type of writing that we do. It's basically symbol writing. So the point being that one of the ways to interpret and explain this would be to extrapolate the time frame. And another hadith that might indicate that the times are much beyond what we can comprehend is the famous hadith in Muslim Muhammad and its, its basis is also in Bukhari and others and this version is in, in multiple books that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the creation, uh, when Allah created Adam, He extracted from Adam all of the souls of Adam. And he showed Adam all of these souls in front of him. And Adam saw the brightness. Some were brighter than others and some were darker. This is the nur, nur of Iman. So Adam was particularly drawn to one particular light. He was drawn to one particular uh, uh, light. And Adam said, who is this, O Allah? Who is this that I can see a brightness coming from his forehead? And Allah Azza wa Jal says, this is one of the last of the generations of your descendants by the name of Dawood. Okay, هَذَا رَجُلٌ مِنْ آخِرِ الْأُمَمِ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِكَ This is a man from the very last of your generations by the name of Dawood. And then the hadith goes on that, that Adam gifted Dawood 40 years of his own life. Right? So Adam was initially des destined to live a thousand years and he gifted 40 to uh, his son Dawood. So when the angel of death came at 960 years, uh, Adam had forgotten that he had given uh, 40 and he denied it and Allah gifted him another uh, 40. Uh, but uh, the point is that he had gifted 40 to Dawood alayhi salam. Now, the point being that the interesting phrase that we have over here is that uh, Allah Azza wa says to, 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 to Adam 
This is Dawood who shall come in the very end of times. Now, for us, we think of Dawood as living in ancient times, okay? From our perspective, Dawood is the very beginnings, you know, of humanity, right? I mean, I'm being a little bit stretching, but you get my point here, right? We, we think Dawood is long, long time ago, even though, of course, you know, technically, uh, he might have been uh, uh, 2,000 years from now, okay? So, 1,000-something uh, BC, 900-something BC is Dawood. So, from our time frame, okay, uh, sorry, 3,000 uh, 3, years from now, 3,000 years in the past. Now, so from our time frame, uh, Dawood is 3,000 years ago, okay? And that's way back. And in the hadith, we are told that Dawood is going to be at the very end of times, which indicates from Adam to Dawood is such a large time frame that Dawood is considered to be, now this, if, we, if it was 50,000 years, and Dawood is 3,000 years from now, right? then we understand 3,000 years ago, then we understand 50,000 years, and in the last 5,000 years, Allah knows when is the Day of Judgment, we ask Allah to uh, not to, um, have us alive when that happens, we don't want to be there towards Akhir zaman but uh, things are happening and Allah knows how much time is left, you know, we are living closer and closer to Akhir zaman So the point being that, uh, once again, I hope you get what I'm saying here, if Dawood is Akhir zaman and Akhir umam then where are we? And it does indicate that between Adam and Dawood is a far larger gap than a mere 2,000 that the Jewish calendar would have posited. Because the Jewish calendar would say there's around 2,000 between Adam and Dawood. And, and that means 4,000 between us and, and Dawood, so, or 3,000 between us and Dawood. So how then can Allah say that Dawood is the last of your um, of the last of your ummas? And he is in fact before even half of the 6,000. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. So bottom line, that theologically, we have no obligation to believe in any number. And in fact, I argue that the Quran and Sunnah might even uh, indicate that 6,000 is a too small of a number. And that in fact, the, the, the notion of us having been here 50, 60,000 years actually makes more sense if you look at these other factors. And Allah says in the Quran that, you know, uh, some of the prophets we have told you their stories and some we haven't. مِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَصَصْنَا عَلَيْكَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَمْ نَقْصُصْ عَلَيْكَ And so the majority of prophets, they are in such antiquity that we have no knowledge of them whatsoever. And therefore this explains uh, this large gap and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Ya man ajabta dua nuh fantasar wa hamaltahu fi fulkika al-mashhul Ya man ahala al-nara hawl khalilihi rawhan wa rayhanan bi qawlika kuri I'm curious, so according to the Quran, how long ago did Adam live? And and one thing I'm trying to understand is, so if the Quran predicted that, say, something happened 500 years ago, and scientists, and, and scientists actually proved that this happened 500 years ago, that's fine, yes? But so what happens in situations where... So what happens then when scientists out there find something that say it dates back to this many years ago but then doesn't agree with the Quran? Does that mean that that knowledge should just be dismissed? Like maybe the creation or maybe the existence of man on earth. Should we ignore the scientific part of that and just go with what the Quran states? Otherwise, um, the person that asked the question had a very good question. There's so many questions out there to ask and so many things to learn. And through these videos, we learn quite a lot, or at least I learn quite a lot. So please, if you have the answers to my question, feel free to answer. And yeah, also if you guys have information on videos that um, talk about Adam and how he forgot that he gave away 40 years of his life to someone else please feel free to suggest them i'll be more than glad to react to them or anything else that you guys want me to react to make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video